it's the Gloucester Meteor's turn on the workbench. Been looking forward to this one. Had it a few months. Uh, should have built it earlier to be honest, but I've now got it on the workbench. We get cracked on with it. I hope you'll stick with us and enjoy it because it's a, a lovely kit. Very new tooled kit from uh, Airfix. I'll put a link up for the uh, review of it I've done and unboxing. But yeah, absolutely stunning kit it is. I've seen a couple of these built and they're up, they look beautiful, really do. I hope I do mind justice like ones I've seen have been done. So, no further ado, let's crack on and get a built. So I'm using my favourite nippers here, just so I can cut the parts off. I can cut quite close to it with these. The parts fit together quite easily. Nice easy locating pins on them. And there's hardly any flash whatsoever on any of it. So there's very little to clear off, so which is really nice with a kit like this. And as you can see there, that fitted in there and it hardly needed any glue. It fitted in nice and tight. They were perfect. And this Tammy R glue, brilliant glue. If you've never used it before, it's worth a try. It's my favourite favorite glue, really. But I do like the Revel with the needle. You'll see me using that later on. This is the the cockpit section I'm spraying up now, getting a bit of black paint on it. It's a primer actually, the Mr. Surfacer one, but it's that good. You could near enough use it as a black paint if you wanted, but just with a bit of dry brushing with a bit of like grey, just to uh, put a bit of de show a bit of details off a bit. It's not new or special, it just helps a little bit. There's just one decal in that bit of cockpit for the uh, instrument panel. You can just see it. And then on the seat, there's just some on the top there. And you just need to line them up right and then just dab them off with your cotton bud. Oh, that's better. And this is me. Other glue I like to use, the Revel. I find that eats through the paint. So you can put seats in, stuff like that. Any part where you've already painted it, it will eat through it and allow it to stick better. That's why it's going on there like that. So when I put this cockpit section in now, you can actually uh, be faithful, well, rely on, should I say, it actually uh, sticking. And I'll join the two main fuselage pieces together. And again, it's going to be the extra thin cement this time. If you just work down it, pieces at a time, you won't have a problem. Anywhere where you can see a little bit of a nibs where I've left them on, I sand all that off after. I tend to find that way you don't over sand any piece, so when you do it, it stuffs it up a bit. This is just old blue tack, and I'm putting in here as a weight. Uh, it's all I've got at the minute. I sometimes put old coins in, well, I say old coins, pennies or five pences in, but I can't fit them in on this, so it's copying fop blow tack. And it does work, it has held it, it's only just though. And this is the wing sections and engines part, so start and glue these bits in now. All that, that makes a frame all the way around your landing base, so you've got two sets to do with here. But they're just pushing and clicking again. The engines are very simple. I know it does stay to paint inside of these, but half at time you can't see them, so I never bother. What I do do, if I think you can see into it, I'll paint inside with a brush, or I'll try and spray into it. But I always find you don't see into them anymore. Not unless you get the 148 scale, then I will paint them, because them you can see in a lot at time. These 172s, it's that small and tight, you don't. And this is the other side of wings going on finishing it off it is quite stubby short the wings they're not great long ones but that's uh, a bit of the feature about the aircraft i think makes it look fantastic and that straight in clicked in not a problem and again straight down absolutely beautiful can't can't knock uh, air fixes molding on uh, well 
uh, tooling on this. This is brilliant. It really is. Everything just slides straight in. Very little gaps, if any. It's absolutely beautiful, this. You see them two little white uh, dots underneath there? <laughs> that's where I accidentally uh, drilled out. And that's where you would, if you wanted to put a stand for it, if you had it in flying position. But I don't have mine on wheels with undercarriage down. So I filled them in. Because I thought, oh, I want to I wanna keep it like that. Filled them in, sanded them. These are just the other parts of engines, just gluing them on now, so they're done. But as you can see, there's, there's very little you can see at engines inside. Oop. These go on easy enough. I did stuff up with the tail section. I forgot to put a piece in when I was doing it. So I had to then put it in after I'd glued the fuselage together. So it doesn't turn the tail. But I do believe you can make it turn. I'm not so sure now looking at that there. I doubt you can actually. You can see there, it's very little tiny amounts of glue you need. I have my pot so it's nearly empty, so all I'm doing is just dipping tip of brush into it most of the time. This is just the nose cone. And you can just see where the four guns would have been there, on each side. Like I say, everything's absolutely beautifully fitting together. These, though, this is a bit different. I find these very tight to get together. They did take some pressing in on each other, these wheels. But they are doable. The external fuel tanks. Again, easy enough. And again, you can see that pip underneath where I've not sanded it off. Again, I do it all after when I do seem. But I always let it dry, though. Make sure you've let it dry for a good bit. And that's the best thing. <laughs> them two white dots you've seen me fill in, I've just gone and covered them completely up with that <laughs> section there that I've put on. Yeah, we do make some mistakes. But this is near enough the main sections built now. As you can see, uh, these putting in now. I'd, you will see I did make a mistake. I forgot to put the top ones on when I did the primer and that on it. So I had to then fit them in after. I found them a very tight fit then. I don't know if they're meant to be very tight or not. But they were. This is a Mr. Servicer Black Primer. You probably, If you've watched my videos before, you know it's one of my favourites. But blasting this all over it give it a nice good coat and it means that when I spray my silver on it it's going to take better and it has always seems to have a better finish I think uh, silver paint when you've got black brown on it going to be using Vallejo's metal colours dural aluminium or dural aluminium whatever that was pronounced anyway using this find it one of the really really easy paint to use it goes on fantastic when you're spraying it's beautiful for it but it also brush paints brilliant so if you make any mistakes at least you can easily repair it with it so that's what I'm going to use now just take that end off because it stops it from drying up so easy the tip Now, I wonder if I had a bit of something stuck in it. But, oh, 
frame lovely again now. How I normally expect this one to do. Spin around again. This blue that I'm painting on here, it's, uh, it's a Tamri R1. It's not a perfect exact match, I ain't got it. So I've just used the closest that I've got. Thing is, I can't remember which one it won are, so I can't tell you because I've got quite a few blues from Tamri R. But like I say, it's not the right one anyway, but it looks nice when it's on. I've got Microsoft and Microset here in these pens you'll not see it other one it's a red one but it's all red painted and that's got blue that's the microsol with blue the other one's the set i'll just put my microsol on put the decal to where i want it to be as you can see it's probably not the most efficient way of doing it but when they're a big decal i find them move a lot easier with my finger but you can tear them but i find these cartograph decals the not saying the bomb proof, but the bloody damn good, car, uh, the good, damned good decals. I'll get it out eventually. And I find they are they ever hit tear, they are they ever fold over, and all of that. They are one of my favourites, to be honest. Again, you'll see the ump wing. You can just move it where you want, as long as you're not trying to do too much. You get it roughly in place where you want, like so. Yeah, it's not far off. And what I tend to do with when it's a nice flat surface, I'll use a microfiber cloth like that, and it helps it. You can press it really into any panel lines, that kind of stuff. The usual. This is the black, by the way, uh, panel wash, and just running down them, just putting into all of the actual panel lines and stuff like that. I'm just trying to highlight the details. That's all make it look a bit nicer I have put uh, a gloss over this so that when it goes on it is cleanable off this panel line and if you don't put a gloss on you will find whatever you do with it will stick straight into the paint and make a mess of it and I've done that myself where I've not put enough gloss on or I've even forgot to do it on at times But I'm, I'm not trying to do a complete overall wash on this one. I'm just doing the panel lines themselves. I'm trying to keep it clean. And a bit of tissue paper. And you just wipe it off. As you can see, it's staying behind in the panels. Coming straight off of the actual... Uh, oh, the panel lines say it's staining behind in, I meant. But it's coming off the panels. And it wipes off. Very simple. You don't have to press on too hard. It might look like I'm pressing hard and fast, but I'm not. It's just because I've spent video up a little bit for you. So you're not sat watching all day long. And you can use a cotton bud like this just to clean off in any areas where you can't get to it very easy. It's a very quick, simple method to give a bit of detail to your models. Here, where this is probably where I've not got enough gloss on it, and you can see it's sticking to it quite a bit, the actual... Uh, panel line so that's turpentine thinners in there and all i'm doing on a brush i'm just rubbing away gently at the edge and then you get your cotton bud because you put a bit on and you can just clean it off there a lot better like that my paint figure up bit of flesh paint i've got quite a few different vallejo paints for hand painting I find them the best light. So, as you can see, a bit on his face there. And we we'll paint his uniform up as so, which it's... That paint, you, you can see on him, I painted him uh, black first and I put a little bit of white uh, primer over him just to 
make it so you can see a bit of shadow lines. But it's only a little figure, 172 scale, they're never very big. I do like how you painting his uh, hat white, well his helmet white. I always think they stand out well under the cockpit then. Under the canopy should I say, sorry. But it, it's a nice figure for 172 scale. You wouldn't knock it for what it is. It comes free in kit anyway, it's part of it. There's just his boots and a few other details now just to paint up black and then it's finished. You can put pin washers and that on them if you want. I didn't bother with this one. I just left him as he was. I thought it looked all right. Right, time to get some... Uh, undercarriage and wheels put on again as you can see my revel helps hold them a bit stronger these it's like that there's not really hard about it. everything seems to just click straight into place like these here they just went straight in never had a problem with them out like this usually I'm dreading putting out like this in after because usually I'm messing it up but no, perfect. There is a bar that goes across after and that makes it even stronger, the wheel section. And all of these doors are exactly the same. Bit of glue on the door and just, well, just place it over. Well, place it over. When you eventually get round to it, you place it over it. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> but yeah, it's lovely. So, figure in now. It's just a bit of glue. Place them in, sitting into it, press them in. This is, uh, it's just like a, a white glue, but instead this is called pink, uh, not pink, purple glue, sorry. From, uh, I'll just check, Elm, is it Elmer's? I'll just one second. Uh, yeah, Elmer's goes on purple, dries clear. Get it from a supermarket. Yeah, it's a good one. It seems to stick my cockpit as well. And if you do get any spillages, you just need a bit of water and you can just wipe it away with that with a brush, just brush it away. This is the removal of obviously the masking that's around and it's always a, a bit of a, a open prey time that you haven't had any seepage of paint underneath the masking, but it seems to be working well. It is Tamiya masking tape I use. I do use a couple of variants, frog tape, tamiyas, and if I do out uh, like dioramas of that, I use even cheaper tapes then because it doesn't matter too much if you get spillages at time. Yeah, that looks well that, doesn't it? Not bad that. We've completed her and she looks absolutely beautiful. I've got a bit of a gap there. And if I'd not done it the way I like to do it, which is to add the actual uh, canopies at the end, I'd have seen that and I'd have filled that if I'd have done it, if I'd have put the canopies on first. But hey, you live and learn. But in all essence, the kit is absolutely stunning. I'd recommend this kit for anybody. It's a beautiful kit to build. It's simple, nice instructions, and it makes into an absolutely cracking looking kit. Now, undercarriage, when I first saw that, I thought, oh, it's going to be a pain to do that. It's going to be a nightmare again. Absolute dream. Everything fitted perfectly, first time, every time. And people pull airfix kits down. And maybe in the past they were justified, but I'll tell you now. As a, a modern manufacturer, these kits they're making now with the decals, with, with the actual kit itself, beautiful. I think I've mixed those two, <laughs> them two up when I've done them. Slightly proud and slightly again, but maybe they were meant to be like that, but I just think I've mixed them up. These are my, my mistakes, as you'd say. That bit there, painted it. Read it, put it in my tweezers, went to put it on and that little thing, and it just went woof, gone. It pinged out at tweezers and I think 
There's more chance of finding aliens on the moon than there is uh, me finding that part again. So I just did a bit of stretch sprue and I don't think it looks too bad. It's probably a bit thicker than what it needs to be but other than that, lovely. I've chose this decal scheme because I really liked that blue. That blue that I've used there it is not the blue that this Umbro state is the closest I could get. I wasn't going to buy one pot of blue paint just for that that section. So I've done it as close as I can and I don't think it's a million mile off. I think it probably should have been a bit darker. I've done a semi-gloss uh, varnish on it at the end. So you've got that little bit of the shininess still for the actual kit. So it looks quite nice like that. Two parts where it didn't go as well as what it could have done. And it's probably me as I have thinking it. Because it's the first time I've done a kit of this size in the actual silver. I've only done a few kits in silver when I've sprayed it. But if you look here, down that section there. It's not quite took as much the paint. And what I think I've done as I've been spraying. I think I've just missed it a bit not got down into them areas quite as good this side lovely that one not quite as good but i'm not gonna worry over that it just makes it look a tiny bit dirty i've not weathered it i've stuck with her shears because i didn't want to ruin the silver paint on it i just think it looks brilliant black pin wash as you've seen and that is that well I hope you've enjoyed watching me build this kit and I hope you like the result as much as what I do because I'm mightily impressed with that. I'm really happy with it. Oh, one other thing. I didn't use every single decal. Some of the super, super sat tiny ones, they're hard for me to put on, I'll be honest. Uh, not with these hands, builders hands, as you say. And I tend to end up ruining them. So I've put all of what I would say are the main ones anything that big I mean I say tiny ones look at the size of these ones here in the middle of that there the ones there tiny little ones and I've put these ones on as well so they're just really like dots that's about all the one really there's one there tiny decal I've put put most on it's just a few of the most tiny dot ones I ain't done but impressed Recommend it? Yes, definitely I would. I'd recommend this kit to anybody. Um, I wouldn't even say it's a hard kit to build. It's just a joy. So, on that note, I hope you've really enjoyed watching it. Cause, and you've seen me build it and think, yes, I want one. If you do, they're, they're like I say, they're about 20 old quid. They're not dear. But they're, they're, it's worth getting it. Be grateful if you'd subscribe to my channel. That helps me out a lot. And I'd also be grateful if you give me a thumbs up, because the thumbs up always helps show me that you're enjoying the content I'm putting out. Thanks for watching everybody. Catch you around for the next one.